Hey there, beautiful souls. Welcome to season two of the Connection Over Perfection podcast. Get ready to dive into the world of holistic wellness, emotional healing, and the magic of genuine connections. I'm your host, Amber McRae, your therapeutic nutritionist and emotionally focused therapy coach. Together, we're going to embark on a journey of growth, self-discovery, and authentic living. Let's light up our paths and celebrate the beauty of life one connection at a time. Welcome back to another episode of Connection Over Perfection. Today, our guest, Ryan Nolan, is back with us, and he's not only a fitness and nutrition coach, but also the driving force behind a thriving Facebook community called Manifest Through Movement, Strengthen Your Vessel with Training and Nutrition. And if you tuned into our last episode together, Ryan shared his inspiring journey from the culinary world to becoming a certified nutrition specialist. He discussed the pivotal moment when he decided to make a change and the importance of finding your why. Ryan emphasized the connection between food and emotions and how holistic nutrition can play a role in healing. He also highlighted the significance of building a supportive community and taking a holistic approach to health, which I'm all about. So if you haven't listened to that episode, please go check that out now or after you listen to this one. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about the significance of having a why and why that matters and how it's a driving force behind Ryan's commitment to wellness and helping others. He also shares some advice on how you can uncover your own why, even in the face of life's challenges. He just launched his new ebook on finding your why and steps to set it up. So you'll find that linked in the episode description. So without further ado, welcome back, Ryan. Hey, Amber, how are you doing today? Great, great. Uh, yeah, so everything you touched on is exactly accurate. Uh, the new ebook is going to be called Ignite Your Fire, Five Core Actions to Jumpstart Your Journey. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, because it's really about like my whole journey and learning all the things that it took for me to change my life, right? Like, And so we talked about it a little bit last time. Uh, you know, I went from you know an overweight chef to now a pro natural bodybuilder. I think since our last recording is when I got my pro card. I wasn't sure if it was before or after. But, you know, now I'm competing as a pro this season and, uh, you know, through the process, I lost a hundred pounds and like, it really was a process of figuring out what worked best for me and figuring out that like motivation is really fleeting. Like motivation is nice and it, and it sounds great on paper, but in reality, it doesn't get you through the hard days and the hard nights. And it really takes about figuring out your why. And for me, it's really attaching a lot of emotion behind it. Mm, That's huge. That's huge. And I love that you touched on that because in this, this society of let's find motivation, 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 I need motivation. And like you said, it's fleeting on the days where there isn't somebody there, you know, cheering you on, you don't have somebody in your ear, you can't find the courage or muster up the strength to turn on a podcast or the music. And some days it's just not there. And so you have to really tap into something much deeper than that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So Ryan, can you share the moment when you first found your why? Like the reason behind your commitment to wellness and helping others or yourself? Yeah, 100%. It started with myself first. So uh, for me, it was I was scrolling through Facebook and it was actually eight years ago last Thursday, to be exact. Uh, I was scrolling through Facebook and a friend of mine had posted a picture of me. And it was, it was rough. It was a side view. I had a double chin, right? Like, you know, I was, like I said, hundred pounds heavier and it, it was hard. Right. And so I looked at that picture and I really stared at it for a while. And at the time my wife was pregnant and, you know, I wanted to be an active dad. I didn't want to be a dad sitting on the sidelines. Right. And so like between that picture and knowing that what I wanted to be for a future as a future father, was the why, right? Like I really attached to the emotional significance of being active, staying active, being a good influence on my son, my future son at the time, and now my son, right? Mm -hmm. And doing the things that I always knew I wanted to do. And like, that was the reason. That was the commitment. That was the reason. Like, you know, the picture was motivating. Like I wanted to lose weight, but the why was what got me up, got me through the long days, got me through the long hours, you know, getting in. At the time, I think I worked out after work. And so like, it was harder than... And it really drove in to me, like the importance of the emotional attachment to it. Right. And so now my alarm goes off at really early in the morning. There's no like, Oh, I don't feel like it. There's like, I want to be an active dad. Right. Like that's it. Like there's this huge attachment to it and I get to live it now. Like 
I've been making a point of like, uh, so my son's six now, almost seven. And every other Saturday we go to my gym, we work out together. And you know what I mean? He wants to work out. He wants to do push-ups with us. He, he was riding the bike, right? I made a little video about it. We were doing like some rowing together. He wants to do that, right? That. And then when we go to like the trampoline park and play, I get to play tag with him for hours. And like, usually I'm the only parent playing with their kid and, and like, it's, it's interesting to see that dynamic of being able to go out there and play with him for hours and play tag and do all the things, but also see that the other parents are sitting on the sidelines and knowing that that's going to continue to drive me. And that's really like cements my like commitment to help others is I want everyone to be able to do that. I want everyone to be able to keep up with their kids and run with them and play with them and not feel like they have to hold themselves back. Um, you know, and me eight years ago would not have been able to do the things I do today. Right. Yeah. That's huge. I made a big commitment this year is I want to, you know, help 10,000 people with their health goals. That's like my new current vision board goal. Yes. I love that. I can't wait to hear when you reach that. Please share that with us. Cause I know you will. I will. Yes. I will. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you talked about your, that picture you still have in your gym, right? Yep. Yep. It's printed up in my gym. I brought it to my last competition with me. So like on stage, me accepting awards, holding my before picture, right? Like I keep it to keep it humble. Right. I see it all the time. And it really helps to, to relate to clients. Like, you know, I'm at the point where, you know, clients hear me talk or someone hears me talk. They're like, all right, fit dude. That's cool. You don't know what it's like. And I'm like, actually I've been there. I know exactly what emotional eating is like. I know how hard it is to change your ways. I know what it's like to grow up not liking vegetables because I thought green beans came in a can, right? Like I didn't know any better. Right. Like I didn't have these like healthy habits instilled in me. We grew up pretty poor. So I was used to like instant mashed potatoes, plain white rice and whatever vegetables came in a can. Right. So of course I wasn't super keyed up on healthy nutritional food. And I find that happens a lot with other clients too. I talk to them about like what they eat and what their comfort foods are. And a lot of times it's because of how they grew up and what right. they relate comfort and safety to. And so if that's how you relate comfort and safety is food, that's probably not the best for you. It's hard to break that habit or want to break that habit because that's comfort. Yeah, that's huge. Especially, you know, in today's society, when we're, we're bombarded with so much negativity, people are just trying to grasp for some safety and some comfort, like you said, and usually that ends up being food. Yeah. A lot of times it ends up being food. Uh, and that's okay too. I also tell clients not to stay away from that stuff. Like if there's a certain kind of dish that you love because it's a comfort item your mom used to make, enjoy that dish. Maybe not every night, but like right, that when you do have it, yeah, when you do have it, put your phone down, turn off the TV and enjoy the food. Be really mindful of it and be like, wow, that was great. And then move on, right? Yeah, I love that aspect though. I love when I hear other coaches and nutritionists say, you know, you don't have to take that completely out of your life. It's just being more aware is having it sometimes, maybe even like we talked about last time, maybe even replacing one ingredient in it and it can totally change mm -hmm. the health benefits of it. And so it's not this all or nothing mentality. And I think that that also crushes a lot of people and can really affect their why as well. It feels very conforming, very trapped and like there's no way out it has to be like this very restrictive thing yeah 100 percent. and like that's always what i try to get people to stay away from i'm a big fan of the 80 20 rule right like 80 yes. of the time be on track 20 percent of the time enjoy your life right like i had a moment uh on thanksgiving this year where i was eating apple pie you know everyone had gone to sleep and i was 100 percent overindulging in apple pie because i was i was like that whatever and i had a moment of realization that Literally the last time I had apple pie was the prior Thanksgiving in the same kitchen. It was at my wife's family's kitchen. And I was like, oh yeah, this is why I do this. Once a year, I go all out and I enjoy apple pie and then I move on. And then I'll probably be till next year before I have it again, right? But like, I super enjoyed it. I super lived in that moment. I ate about half the pie. It was great. It was awesome. Um, I don't recommend eating half a pie in a sitting. I regretted it the next day. And then I remember that too. I re the next day I was like, this. And I was like, oh yeah, that's why you do this once a year. <laughs> right? Yeah. But I love that you honor that, right? And you allow yourself to enjoy it. And I think that that's so important. Okay. So something that I talk to a lot of people about, and I get this question all the time is how do they figure out their why? How do they uncover their why? And what is the driving force that helps people 
uncover their passion. So I'm a big fan of breaking things down into actionable steps, right? Like we've all heard smart goals, right? Right. And so like the main thing is uncovering your why. So how do you reveal that? Like I always say step one, reflect on your past and current struggles, right? Like where are you at now? But you got to have a point A to get to your point B. You got to know where you are now, right? So reflect on where you're at, you know, what's made you happy, what hasn't made you happy. Be honest with yourself, start to look at that, right? Then step two is you start to envision your ideal future. Like, where do you want to go? Like, and and go deeper into that. Don't just be like, oh, it'd be nice if I was X, Y, Z, or or if I lost this much weight. Like, start to think about how you'll feel. Think about the actual feelings of getting there. Like, how will you feel when you can fit into those clothes? How will you feel when you can run a mile? How will you feel when you enjoy going to the gym, right? Like, say those are your goals, right? Maybe it's a 5K you want to do. How will you feel when you cross the finish line? Right? Like make it really realistic, right? Like think about it. Something that you talked about earlier was mm-hmm. your son and the why and being able mm-hmm. to play with him. And I can relate to that so much is that was one of my whys and why I changed my health is because I wanted to be a playful parent. I wanted to have fun and I wanted to live a life where I could see them grow up. And I think for so many parents that that is yeah. a huge why. So, and, and I know that we talk a lot about our why having to be for ourselves, but I think sometimes it does. We talked about this a little bit last time is that our why can start for being for somebody else, meaning like our kids, we want to be there for our kids. And so that can start as a why wanting to be there for our kids, wanting to feel what it feels like to see our grandkids, you know, in the future, like that, we, it requires us to have to love ourselves mentally, emotionally, and physically to, in order to be here. So I just, I kind of wanted to tap back into that before you kept going. Yeah, totally. Like anything that gets you there is a great stepping point. I think two people are like, Oh, you gotta do it for yourself. Like you said, we talked about that last time. Like, nah, man, do whatever it takes to get started. And eventually it'll become about yourself. Right. You know, exactly. Like it was right. for my son, but it's about being a better dad. And eventually that becomes about being me. Right. And I'm a big, exactly. real big about like manifesting and visualizing. Right. So that's like really like envisioning your ideal future. Right. And now, like I said, I get to live it and it's great to look back and be like, oh, I'm achieving the goal I wanted. And I get to live in that moment all the time. But the next thing I do is I always say, make a list of your personal reasons. Right. Like we just talked about like being healthy for your kid, playing with your kid, like make an actionable list. Be like, Okay, cool. And then you can look at them all the time. I like sticky notes and like, I got a whiteboard in my room, you know, where I get ready in the morning and, and I just look at that. I'm like, oh, here's X, Y, and Z. Then I've got one at work with my three goals for the year, right? Like I always try to keep it actionable and keep it in front of you, right? Like what are these personal reasons you want to think about all the time, right? And it can shift over time, but keep them front of mind, keep them present, you know? And then step four is prioritize your reasons and validate your feelings. Like it's okay if these are rough emotional feelings that come up. Right. Like it's OK if, you know, being an active parent scares you at first and that, that whole idea is rough at first. Like that's valid. Right. Like those are valid feelings and you want to keep that. Right. And that brings us to like the last step. I mean, like keep that why close to your heart. Think about it all the time. Right. That's why I like the post-it notes or the pictures. Like you know, that's why I keep that picture up in my gym because I can think about it all the time. I can look back and be like, that was me, but not anymore. Right. And then I can be actively thinking about the decisions I make today and realize that the person I was eight years ago wouldn't have made these decisions. Right. They wouldn't have made the healthier options and healthier choices. But now I get to every day. Not that I have to. I get to do these things today. Right. And that's how you figure out your why. So break it down. Think about why. Make it actionable. Validate your reasons and feelings and then keep it close to your heart. I love that. Thank you. And I just want to go back to, you said, feel, what does it feel like? Imagine what you want to feel like in the future. And that's part of that manifestation, Mm -hmm. right? Is really getting in tune with what you want to feel like, not just what you want to look like, not just what you want to do, but you have to be able to feel it and, or imagine what it would feel like. And I think that that's such an important piece into really tapping into the why and creating it and making it stick is having that emotional connection to it, to be able to feel it. Yeah, exactly. Like I try to like 
uh, one one tool I like to use is called the workshop of the mind, where you can like picture a place where you where you do your work, where you're gonna work on yourself, where you're gonna work on your goals, right? And I make it as you know real as possible in your mind. Like picture what your workbench looks like, picture what the space you work in looks like, picture where you're gonna be, right? Like you know, perfect example is like when I won my last competition, I pictured myself on stage holding my pro card with three first place trophies. And then I did it. And like, it was actually really nice and validating. I was talking to a friend I hadn't seen in a while. I was like, oh, I won three first place in a pro card. He's like, that's exactly what you told me you were gonna do. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I pictured myself doing it on stage, right? <laughs> right. Like, you know, and that's just because I've taken that each step further, right? First it was be healthy for my son and get in shape, right? Then it was like, be healthy for me. Then it was start competing. Then it was start winning competitions, right? Like. You know, and now the next goal for me personally is is the TED Talk next year in July. That's the that's the personal goal, right? <laughs> yeah. That's one yeah, of my yeah. future goals too. Yeah, I yes, put a date on it, July twenty twenty five. So that's that's the date. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing that down. There you I'm, go. I'm gonna put it in my calendar, and then I'm gonna be like, all right. Exactly. That's that's, that's exactly it. Ryan. You know, and and that, that's another thing I have on a whiteboard that I see when I come to work every day. Boom, there it is. You know what I mean? I keep it close. That's another thing you said is mm -hmm. visualization. And I think that that's so important. And you touched on so many different areas of different modalities to make your why concrete, really get in touch with it. You, you know, you talked about writing it down. There's such a powerful impact when you put pen to paper. That's another form of manifestation of tapping into it. You know, visualization, when you're seeing it every day, you are you know, basically programming your mind and speaking that into existence. And, you know, there's a lot, a lot of science on manifestation and how that works. I think that some people get confused. Manifestation doesn't mean that you just say it and it's going to magically happen. You also have to put the effort behind it. And that's what we're saying here is that, you know, finding your why is really going to help you keep going to reach those goals when motivation is fleeting. And so the visualization of being able to see it all of the time, see it every day is, is so important. And it adds another layer to really being connected to it. Yeah, exactly. It. So like, it's like, how many different ways can you make it real, right? I always talk about massive action. Like it's one thing to be like, cool, I want to get to this goal. Well, like now you got to put massive action behind that, right? And like, that's what really finding your why can drive you, can set that fire under you. That's why the, the new ebook's called Ignite Your Fire, right? Because like we have to have that internal drive to get to there and we have to put in the work. But I guarantee you that first step is much harder than the last step, right? And like, you know, that first week when I went to the gym, I was like, oh man, this is hard. I don't know what I'm doing. I feel awkward. Now, you know, it's in a blink of an eye, it's been eight years, right? Like that's really how quick it is, right? And, and now I do this for a living and now it led to this great, new career that's been much better than any other career I ever had prior to this. And it's because I took that first step of going to the gym of being like, Oh, it's time to change. Right. And that, like I said, that first step was hard, but now it's just what I do. And now I relate that to every area of my life and that's how I make it, keep it connected. Right. And then I try to like, like I said, I try to make it habitual, right? Like, okay, cool. How can I play with my kid? If my goal was being an active dad, I have to now be an active dad. Right. How do I make time mm -hmm. for that? Right. And right. so like, I've now started every other Saturday. We go to the gym together. He comes to my gym, me and him work out. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's fun. He, he keeps his attention for about an hour, then he gets bored and then he moves on, but that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, that's good. Right. Um, and then I try to take him to like, you know, either like the park or the trampoline park, like, you know, every other, the, every opposite week. Right. So every opposite week we do have it. We have like a father, son active date, quote unquote. You know what I mean? And that's how I keep connected to my why. Right. Like throughout the week, we do plenty of stuff, too. But there's like set in my schedule time for me and him to go be active together. Right. Because that was the goal. Hey there, beautiful souls. I'm Amber McRae, your therapeutic nutritionist and emotionally focused therapy coach dedicated to guiding you on your holistic wellness journey. If you're ready to reclaim your health, nourish your body and cultivate deeper connections within yourself and others, let's chat. Schedule a free consultation today and let's explore how holistic nutrition and emotionally focused therapy can support you on your path to wellness. Schedule that free consultation now 
and take the first steps towards a healthier, happier you. Find the link to my link tree in the episode description below. Well, I love that it, that's very intentional. And that's the other thing is your your goals and your dreams don't just come true just by putting them on a whiteboard or writing them down is you have to be very intentional. Like you said, you could get to this point and you, okay, you're, you're a healthy dad and you're able to play with him, but are you playing with him? And really that implementation also of using your tools and making it part of your life. And I think so many people lose it in this area is they're so focused on say the end goal, the goal of say like being a healthy parent or being an active parent, but then they forget to actually be that parent, be that active parent, enjoy it and be present in it. Yeah. Uh, I had this real big eye opening thing. I was on, I've been, I've been on a few retreats in the last couple of years and there was, and I was doing some mindset coaching around these things. Right. And, you know, our coach asked us all, well, what's the most important stuff in your life? Right. And of course, wife and kids are my most important thing. He was like, cool, do me a favor, pull your phone out and show me where they are on your schedule. And I was like, oh no, like, oh no. Like <laughs> that was like, the that was reality. reality. Of like, it. I had tons of business meetings, tons of work meetings, tons of like other things on my schedule. I didn't have dedicated time to them. And that was like the oh, like realization that like I've been striving for this why, but not implementing Right. And like, how do I implement it? Right. And so now it's in my schedule. Now I have like date night with the wife. I have, you know what I mean? Like at least one weekend a month, we get out of town together. You know, every other week was, I bring my kid to the gym. Every other Sunday we go to the trampoline park. It's like dedicated time. Right. You know, that I, that I don't miss. It's like super important. Just like I treat like I would a doctor's appointment. If it's in my schedule, I got to do it. It's what we do. You know? I love that you mentioned that because it's something I'm actively working yeah. on as well. <laughs> so um, I love that. And one huge thing that you said is is putting it into into your schedule, right? We fill up our lives with all of these other things and we feel like, oh, our family, they'll understand just this one more business meeting. I'll just, I'll just tap into our time a little bit here and a little bit there. They're understanding. They love me. It's not going to it's not going to be that big of a deal. I'm always with them. I'm always home. And when we have that mentality, it just slips away little by little and we lose the foundation and we lose the connection to our why. And so I love the reminder of, you know, is it in your schedule? Most of the time, we don't schedule. Yeah. I made a big point of it at the beginning of the year. So, our like, calendar, which is that, very you know, that, like that coaching saying. call was like last January. And so, I've been really implementing it. And then this year in January, I sat down with my wife and I was like, cool, what weekend every month are we going to go somewhere? What time am I going to spend with the kid? And I made sure my entire year is planned out so they don't get pushed to the back burner. They're the first priority because I said they were the first priority and, and I want them to be the first priority. So I actively made them the first priority before I booked out anything else. I was like, cool, let's put them into the schedule. Let's be proactive. And that's how I keep my why front and center, right? Like, how do you stay connected, right? Like, because life is going to come up. Life is going to be busy. There's going to be a ton of business meetings. There's always going to be another networking event or another client or someone else uh, that wants your time and attention. And, and it's really easy to be like, well, uh, I'm working really hard to do this for my family, right? When in reality, you need to put the family first, right? Like, you know, and uh, I've now just set up like my three main priorities. It's right. family, health, business in that order, right? Like, That's huge. you know what I mean? Everything else is secondary, you know, and business is the last one. Like business is really important, right? But it's family and health first, right? None of those are going to matter. If I didn't have all those other two, business wouldn't matter, right? It wouldn't be the same. And like... That's how you stay in your why, right? Regardless of what your why is, you need to make sure it's front and center. You know, let's say it's yeah, not family, say so it's true. something like run a 5k or say it's something like do a competition or say it's, you know, uh, fit into your old jeans or whatever exactly your why is. You need to have like breakdowns of where you're going to be, what you want to be, how it's going to feel, how it's going to feel when you get there. And then how do you stay there, right? Like it, you don't just achieve the goal and then wander off. It's like, how do we get to that goal and how do we stay there for the rest of our lives? 
I always tell clients when I start working with them, my job is to teach you the skills you need to not need me. I'm happy when a client's like, I think it's time for me to move on. I'm like, great. That's awesome. You have the, you know, habits instilled. And on the flip side, I'm also not like harsh with clients. I'm like, oh, I didn't do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, yeah, but you did walk more this week. You did track your food. You didn't think about when you're eating that burger that it probably wasn't the best idea. Even if you still ate it, like you're thinking about it, right? Like, yeah, that's the first step, man. It's going to take, you can't spend 40, 30, 40 years yeah. building bad habits and expect them to change in three weeks. You are aware, like, yeah. It's going to take a few years to undo those bad habits and that's okay. But like the fact that you, if you just do 1% better every day or even every right. week, that's a huge improvement. Like it really, before you know it, you'll look back and you'll have a huge amount of improvements. Right. That movement forward, always moving forward. Mm -hmm. So I know we talked a lot about how we stay connected to our why when facing life's challenges. Do you have any other advice for people on what else they can really do to stay connected to that why when, you know, trauma hits, when, you know, when they lose a job, when life really happens because life is always lifing around us and it's <laughs> tough it's tough to to stay in that and to hold on to that why when you know in reality sometimes life seems hopeless and helpless yeah i mean and there's gonna be those times right and so there's a couple of things you can do and we talked about it a little bit but it's like really pinpointing your goals like be very specific with what your goals are right like i had a client recently she wanted to lose 20 pounds by her 20th reunion and she crushed it like six weeks early, right? Cause she had a very specific pinpointed goal, right? And on days it's hard, that's when you wanna share these goals with friends, right? Or, or family or whatever it is, get your own little personal cheer squad, right? Like, so if you share these goals with like your three or four closest friends and you're having a hard week, hopefully they'll reach out to you and call you on it, right? Like hopefully you have the kind of friends that'll tell you when you're not reaching the things you said you're gonna do, right? Like I strive to keep my friend group the kind of people that will call me out you know what I mean? And, and say like, Hey, yeah. you said you're going to do this. Where is it? Why aren't you doing it? Let's go. You know, like I have like a weekly group call with a couple of men I met that we check in every week. Hey, what are you doing? You said, you're going to do these things. What are you doing on it? Right. And I built myself up like an accountability thing. Right. Um, right. So make your pinpoint your goal, share that goal with others. Right. Uh, even if it's like your, say it's your pet, say you have a dog, just say it out loud to somebody or something. But say it's a bush, who cares? But the fact that you vocalize it and say it out loud is going to make it much more real. And they're like, oh, I said it. I said I'm going to do the thing, right? right. Then you want to like break it down and chart your course and be like, all right, well, if I want to do, you know, for me, it was being active dad. And I was like, okay, well, how do I do that? Like step one, go to the gym. Step two, I don't know. Step three, profit, right? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it ended up being, you know, pick a, pick a competition. Right. And for me, it was, I started with powerlifting. I was like, all right, cool. Let's pick an arbitrary date, 18 months out. And now I have a baseline to chart my course on. Right. And like in the process, I became healthy and strong and active, but it was really, and like, it was really just the process of getting there. Right. So pinpoint your goal, share your goal, set a date make, and chart your goal. Right. You know, once that all starts to work, start to like celebrate the little wins, you know, you can, and you will get there. Right. Like, don't be like, oh, well, I didn't track my food and I and I didn't meal prep. Think about, well, I did walk today. Well, I did get up a little earlier. Well, I did think about going to the gym, right? Like celebrate those little wins, right? Because it's going to be hard. You need to give yourself those dopamine hits. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the reality of it. And if yeah. you deprive yourself of that and you, the goal is so big that you never get to celebrate, you never get to get that dopamine hit of feeling good, you won't gain that snowball effect. You're just going to crash because why would you keep going? Yeah. And that's like the hard thing about fitness is it's not day one. You see a difference. It's not day two. You see a difference. It's like day 100, day 200, right? right? Like, and like, it's the true, like I always talk about like discipline as a true act of self-love and like the biggest form of self-love is because you're setting aside short-term enjoyment for long-term enjoyment right and it, it took me a lot of years to realize this especially somebody who's in recovery right like you know i always try to talk about this too a little bit like having 10 years sober i spent a lot of years not being disciplined not thinking about the future not living in that long term 
right? And so having to look at a whole reframe for everything in that sort of like self-discipline, self-love sort of way. And that's what you do when it gets hard. Like there's um, plenty of mornings when my alarm goes off that I don't want to do it, but it's, I'm well past the, do I want to do it today? Do I feel like doing it today? And it's just do it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and again, visualization helps. I have a picture of me playing with my kid in my room, right? Like, mm -hmm. all right, cool. I see it when I wake up. I'm like, all right, do the thing, do the thing, right? Like, and it's going to be hard. There's plenty of days when you don't feel like it. There's plenty of days where the weather sucks. There's plenty of days where life happens, right? You know, um, you know, my father passed last year and that was hard. It was like in the middle of competition season and it was hard. And, uh, I'm so sorry. you know, I let myself relax for a week and really feel those feelings. And like, it was good. I had people around me, like my coach called me on it. He's like, you're stressing yourself out. Just stop tracking for a week. Like I still went to the gym and still did some of the things, but it was more like just get through this week. Right. And then I got back on track, right. Because I had a support group that knew where I was going, that I told them where I was going, that I told I was going to do the thing. And sure, it slowed me down and threw me off, but it led to me still getting to that goal, right? I was going to say, I love that. I think it, it plays such a crucial role too, that you said you allowed yourself to honor the feelings. So you gave your yourself time and space. And I think so many deprive themselves of that and try to just power through it and it doesn't work that way. It doesn't just go away. It comes back. But if you allow yourself to feel those feelings and then sit in them and honor them, then you're more able to, to keep going without yeah. dipping so far down. And I love that, that you said, you know, the accountability of setting yourself up for success. If you know that there's a season that's hard for you, if you know that, on Saturday mornings, it's really tough for you. How can you set yourself up for success? Can, do you have a friend that can be like, hey, on Saturday mornings at this and this time, can you just send me a text and just say, get your ass out of bed, go do your thing or a check-in or maybe Saturday mornings, you only drink the really enjoyable hot cocoa that you love only on Saturday mornings to really help you get up. There are so many things that you can do to set yourself up for success by being aware of where your struggles are. And those aren't bad. You just have to learn how to, to work with them, not against them. I think the hardest thing for most people, especially in our current society, is asking for help. Yeah. Right. And like, and then accepting that help is a whole nother step, right? Like I'm good at, at saying, oh, I need help. And then people are like, oh, here's the help. And I'm like, oh, I didn't actually want it. Like, <laughs> Right. Right. that's been yeah. the big part is accepting the help right and like i have friends i do that for too like you were just reminding me there's at 7 p.m on wednesday i text my friend to stretch her shoulder because she's got a shoulder injury so every wednesday i text right. her at seven and it just says bug you text that's all it says and like you know it's it's really that small thing right and um i think the biggest thing for people to do that they can help reach their why is learn to ask for help and really realize that it's not a weakness that it's okay to accept help from others. It's okay if your friend needs to text you to get up. It's okay if you need to meet your friend at the gym. Right. It's okay, right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm big on this. Yeah, and what I've learned too is like don't sacrifice your own issues for your friends. Like I have friends that need motivation working out. I'm like, cool, well, you can meet me Saturday morning at 7 a.m. at the gym. And they're right. like, well, it's a little early. I'm like, that's cool, you can meet me at 7 a.m. Saturday morning at the gym. I'm like, yeah, that's what time I'll be there. I don't know right. what to tell you, man. That's sleeping in for me, you know? Right. And that's huge. I think, you know, we're both really big on communities and we both have communities. Mm -hmm. You can check out our websites and our link trees, all of our information, join them, get support. I love what Ryan is saying is that coaches and people who really love helping people can often sacrifice their own to help. You don't have to do that. You can still honor your boundaries and the people that want it will either receive and come to you and meet you like Brian was saying hey if you want support and motivation working out at the gym this is what time I'm here right so we're saying that there's there's spaces there's people but you do have to reach for them and that can be really really hard and I think one of the things for me that I've learned is having safe people having safe friends and what that what that means for me is having people who aren't going to judge me where I am they're going to love me right where I am, but they're also going to 
to honor my boundaries, honor my space. And if I say, hey, I need tough love, they'll give me tough love, right? But it's this very safe space. And what I mean by that is just where you feel seen and heard and valued. And for so many people, asking for help, like you said, can feel very weak. We are programmed to do it on our own. And if we get help, then we're weak. And that really is just such a falsity and really to a detriment. I think that it's so important to have self-love and to rely on yourself and to be able to, you know, give yourself some motivation and validation. But there's also such value in community and connection. We are created for connection and we can get so far on our own, but how much further can we get with community, with support, with connection, with the people that um, help us reach our highest possible good. And so finding people that you can be real with and you can be emotional with and that uh, don't judge you and support you on that. It's much easier to do that when you have people like that in your corner. Yeah, I always like the analogy of like, look at the average building. So there's tons of buildings I'm, I'm sure around you all the time, right? Do you think one person did that? Or do you think there was a floor? Do you think there was right. someone who did the framing? Do you think there was someone who did the electrical work? Do you think there was a plumber that came in? Do you think maybe there was even like somebody who laid the foundation on the asphalt? Do you think someone came in then and inspected it? Do you think someone then came in and did the drywall? Do you think another person came in and did the painting, right? Like everything around us exists because of community. Like very few things are done on their own. Right. Like the myth of the self-made person is such a myth, right? Like very little things have done alone. Most things are done in community, right? So why would your health goals and why would your personal whys, why would your fitness goals be any different? Right. Like it really is about community. It really is about being okay with asking for help. It really is being okay about accepting, accepting help, right? Like if we all knew everything about how to be fit and in shape, then everybody would, right? Like, but that's not the case, right? Like, and even I'm, you know, I'm always open to learning new things. I always like to say too, if you know someone in the fitness or nutrition realm and they still have the same opinions that they had five years ago, you might want to look at them. They probably haven't updated their opinions, right? Because things change. Science comes out. Things, you know, what I thought five years ago is very different than what I think now. And that's okay. Yes, right? that's huge. Yeah, exactly. So nothing's done alone. Ask for help. Oh, 100%. Always learning, always growing. So many people have been let down and so many people have been judged that it's hard to be vulnerable, right? It's hard to be vulnerable and let people in and trust people and receive. And that's something that you're just, if you want to get further and you really want to grow and, and reach those goals, you will have to be vulnerable at some point. And again, that just goes back to meeting the right people and having a safe community. So something else that you touched on that I really wanted to go back over was you were talking about habits and doing them every day, getting up and consistency is the new currency. And you talked about the 80-20 rule and there's an amazing book that's called Consistency is a New Currency and I absolutely love it. And one of the things that I learned from that and just all the coaching that I've done is make it fun and it will get done. Also, make your goals and habits repeatable. You have to make them repeatable. If you if you make the habits that you need to do all of the time so hard that you have to fight with yourself every single day, it's not you're not going to do it. It's not going to get done. But if you can say, "Oh, I can do anything for 15 minutes," then you're like, "Okay, I can go do this." And so this is why we talk about baby steps, small steps is if you start with just walking around the block once a day, and you haven't been doing that, that 100% is way better than where you were the day before. Yeah, exactly. I always talk about that too. Like I, I'm a big fan of like what I call workout snacks, where you just do like 10 squats or just do like, you know, workout reach down and touch snacks. your toe. Yeah, like I even, I make little videos that are like two minutes long, just, just get up and do a couple minutes of movement, right? Like, you know what I mean? It doesn't need to be this huge, big ordeal. I think too often people do that too. They're like, well, I got to go to the gym. So I got to eat something. So I got to change. So then I got to shower after like, no man, just like stand up from your desk, 
walk around the house once, sit back down. I don't know, do some air squats. Maybe you feel like doing some like push-ups on the desk or like something super simple is far better than absolutely nothing. Right. And then before you know it, it's, it's the same process. Like, you know, I'll use this for example. I'm bad about folding my clothes. I'm really good at washing them. So what I do is I tell myself just fold one shirt. And then once I start, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to finish. Like, but in my brain, I'm like, oh, just, just do one part, right? Like, it doesn't need to be complicated. Right. I love that. And I'm all about that. I, and I, I tell my clients all the time, start with five minutes a day, even just five minutes. And they're like, well, what is five minutes going to do? And I was like, listen, do you think that it's better to do five minutes a day or to do a half an hour every other week? Because that's what somebody told you you had to do. You know, and you can't, you can only talk yourself into doing a half hour once every other week. So which is going to have a a better effect on your body? That five minutes a day, it's, it's like building muscle. You start super small and you gain that snowball effect. You create wins and your, your brain has to have information that you can do this. So when you do five minutes a day and you celebrate those, like you were saying, when you celebrate those wins, you celebrate that five minutes a day, your brain says, oh, I can do this. I have accomplished something. So when you go to say, okay, well, I'm going to do 10 minutes a day, your brain has less evidence that you can't do it because you've just been proving that you can do those things. And so you're gaining evidence for your brain to not work against you. Yeah, exactly. You know, like when I look at my like current list of habits that I do in the morning, it's a pretty long list, but it wasn't, didn't start that way. I didn't wake up one morning and be like, cool, you're going to do a million new things today. It was one at a time. It was okay. Maybe I go to the gym. And then once I got used to that, I was like, okay, maybe I'll meal prep. And then it was like, okay, maybe I'll track the food too. And I was like, okay, maybe I'll do some cardio in between. And then it was so on and so forth. And now it's like, get up at four in the morning, go to the gym and do a whole bunch of things before sunrise, which is insane to me. Like I'm not a morning person. I don't know. Like sometimes I look at myself doing it and I'm like, man, this is weird. (laughs) But it's like, I don't think you could say that anymore. Like you're not a morning person. (laughs) I know. I I don't know, man. As soon as I go on vacation, I go right back into sleeping in. It's funny. Oh, that's funny. (laughs) Right? Like like, that's how I know. Like as soon as I go on vacation, I, I like sleep until 11. That's like my MO. But like, when it's not that, I'm just like, it's what I do now, right? And it's like what you're talking about. It was just little evidence that I can do it. I can do this. I can do this. Add the next layer. That's totally maintainable. I can do it, right? And then uh, I think I talked about this a little bit last time, but habit stacking. Once you prove to yourself you can do one little thing, like, cool, we're going to do five minutes of work. Then it's going to be like, maybe we do five minutes of work and drink some water. Then it's like, right. maybe we do five minutes of work, drink some water, and think about meal prepping, like not even even start yet. It's just, you just continue to stack that habit together to where it becomes maintainable. Right. And then it's like, you know, how do we get more water in the day? And it's like, Oh, well, I'm gonna put this cup in front of like, you know, my biggest thing was getting more water. in, so I just fill a cup of water before I go to bed and it's on my nightstand. So I wake up and I'm like, Oh, it's already there. And I start right. Like now I've got this like beginning. And then it's like that continued evidence of like, Oh, I can do these things because I already accomplished a goal as soon as I opened my eyes. Yes. I love that you said, you know, you didn't start with having all of these habits that you do is you started with one at a time. And it's really when you began to integrate that into your life, then when that becomes consistent for you, then you add the next one in. You don't have to add all five in at the same time. And this is what I tell people. And even me, when life happens and I, I get off track or I go on vacation and I come back, I might have to restart and start back at the basics, adding one in until I'm used to it again. And oftentimes it it doesn't take me as long after a while, but I still might have to restart and go back to the basics and that's okay. And I think so many of us have this crash and burn mentality, this all or nothing that I have to do all of the habits right now, or I'm not going to accomplish my goals. And what happens is, is oftentimes say like with new year's resolutions, people just crash and burn and then they never reach their goals instead of having 
this mentality of the small baby steps. If I just do five minutes a day, if I just implement this slowly, but it's, we're on such a fast paced society. It's so hard for people to digest that concept. Yeah, exactly. And it, and I think it's intentional because that's how people convince you they need to sell you this X, Y, Z because like, oh, well, you obviously are failing if you can't do all of it at once. So here's this program, right? That'll teach you how to do everything in 30 days, right? Like, and like, it goes back to that, like learning to ask for help. Like, it's okay if you're not perfect at everything, <laughs> if you just ask for help. And if you start focusing more on like the little habits, then the massive life changes you'll get there right Right. you'll get there you know it's really about that consistency thing if you consistently do the same thing a hundred times you'll get good at it like i read some study i've read some statistic and if it was like if you practice one hour a day for a year of any new task you'll be in the top 10 percent of the world at any task because nobody puts that much dedication into something when you think of it objectively like one hour is not that much but it's the everyday thing, right? You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All of this has been super helpful. And I've even been over here jotting down some notes. I think one of my favorite things that you said was, how many ways can you make it real? That shit's going on my board somewhere in my office now. How many ways can you make it real? I love that. I love that. So thank you. And do you have anything else that you want to tell our listeners today? Yeah. Uh, believe in yourself. Like that's the simple answer. Learn to believe in yourself, even if it seems unrealistic at first and other people are like, I don't know if that's possible. Like just believe in yourself, right? Like that belief, regardless of like how crazy it feels at first is going to get you there, right? Like, yeah, we should have a why. Yeah. We should have community support. You really need to believe in yourself. And like, I always like to tell people the best way to build self-confidence is to keep your promises with yourself. Yeah. Right? Like, that's how you build a belief structure in yourself. Like, for me, when I first started, it was very simple. It's like a to-do list with three things, like stretch, walk five minutes, brush your teeth. Like, stuff yes. stuff I was probably already going to do, but I was like, oh, I get to check it off. Oh, I get to check it off. Right? You have to build that. Mm-hmm. And then I did that, you know, for a few months. And then I was like, well, let's make this more complicated. Right? And then more complicated. And then, right. Before you knew it, I was doing loftier and loftier goals and it was made achievable. And even now, as I, as I journey into the unknown with like my business and my current like competition season, like it doesn't feel scary like it used to, because I know that last time I, I had a goal that seemed unachievable, I believed in myself and I reached it. So now it's just make the goals more and more unbelievable. Right? Great. I love that. And I love that you said, believe in yourself and not just like the here believe in yourself, but there's an action. It's, it's those small habits that build the evidence that you can believe in yourself. And it really doesn't matter what the fucking task is. It can literally be get out of bed and you get to put that check mark, put that star, do whatever. And you're like, I can do this. And then you begin to believe, okay, I can do these things that I make promises to myself and I can keep them. That's super huge. Yeah. Ryan, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure having you on and I'm sure we'll be doing some more episodes in the near future and we'll be looking forward to hearing you on a Ted talk in uh, July, 2025. And then uh, for everybody else who's listening, I I put together a small ebook about finding your why, and you're going to be able to find that at spitefitness.com backslash ignite your fire. And that will all be in the description in the episode as well, along with all Ryan's information where you can find him and work with him. Ryan, thank you so much. Hey, amazing listeners. It's Amber McCray here from Podcast Connection Network. Big shout out to everyone supporting the men of the house with Richard Kraft, Hot Mess Espresso with Heather Harrington, Everything is Connected with Hunter Allen, and My Connection Over Perfection. We cherish your likes, shares, follows, and comments. They mean everything to us. Don't forget to check out the episode description for our page to links to all of our podcasts. Your passion brings our community to life, making it a warm and welcoming space. A huge thanks for being the heart of our network.
The views and opinions expressed by myself and any guest on this podcast are solely ours and do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of any organizations we are affiliated with. The content provided is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as medical advice. As always, consult with a trusted healthcare professional regarding any medical conditions or concerns.